this is Mrs. Parker and I'm in the car right now, but just follow me on this journey as I take you through some eight step course um, tips on beginners for starting your business. Um, I'm gonna be in the car for the majority of this ride, but just bear with me and uh, I'm gonna take you step by step and I'm gonna give you guys some good pointers. So stay tuned and subscribe, please. So the first step is to find what you're good at, finding your topic. If you want to go into uh, retail, if you want to go into pets, if you want to go into jewelry, if you like doing nails, if you like cutting hair, if you like working on cars, if you like car washes, it all just depends. There's a lot of stuff out here you can do and you want to find something that you're really good at, something that every day you wake up in the morning, you're not, you know, complaining about, you know, oh, why am I doing this and I'm so tired of this. Like you want to pick something that when you get up every single day in the morning, you're going to love it no matter what. And you also want to think about something that is going to help in 10 years, something that a lot of people are going to spend their money on constantly, maybe something that people need, you know, it could be dog walking services, you know, whatever floats your boat, whatever you're good at, whatever you, you know, you're going to know at the back of your hand that you're going to be good at no matter what, that's something that Step you want to choose. two is finding if you want it to be a product or a service. When it's a product, you're going to be basically selling it from all over around the world or you're going to be selling it here in Las Vegas. Whatever you want your product to be, you're going to have to sell it, you're going to have to ship, you're going to do all that stuff. Whether it's a service, you're going to have to spend more time providing that service. Whether it is cutting hair or doing nails or doing lashes, you're going to have to take the time out of your day to actually, you know, provide that type of service. So product and service is two completely different things. So you need to find out what you want to do and if you want it to be a product. And you service. also want to think about competition. There's a lot of money in the world for everybody to be making, but a lot of people are going to be doing the same thing. There's going to be a lot of barbers in the world. There's going to be a lot of, you know, people who do nails. Some people have a shop. Some people don't have a shop. They work from home. Some people don't work from home. So, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. So that's another thing to think about either if you want a product or a service. It's very difficult, but at the same time, you know, it's about what you bring to the table. It's about your business name, the logo, how it looks, you know, how you reach out to your customers. You know, a lot of people, they do the same thing, but obviously people go to different other businesses because of how it's done. So you need to think about, you know, that unique style that you bring to your business and what's gonna be different from everybody else that's doing the same thing. So now I'm moving on to step three. So you found out what you're good at, you found a topic, you found out if you want it to be a product or a service, or let's say you already have those things. The next thing you wanna think about is your logo. Your logo and finding a domain and getting the correct website is gonna bring a lot of attention to your business, how it looks, you know, whether people can call in, you know, all that stuff. You can hire a professional digital, digital, sorry, a designer to create your logo you can go on Etsy and buy a logo you can create your own at logo makers they have a lot of them online it's it's a lot of different ways you can create your logo a lot of people they like to be unique and they want to be totally different from everybody else a lot of people don't care they'll just buy one and create one you can create one in 60 seconds I think I'll list them all down below there's a lot of examples uh, so there's different ways you can create your domain and create a website as far as creating a website, there are a, di a different website users like GoDaddy, there is Spotify or Spotify, however you say it, dot com. Um, a lot of those websites, you're going to have to, you know, choose the colors and choose the fonts and, you know, rearrange things to where you need them to be, whether um, there's different sites where you can just plug in your name, you know, plug in what you want it to say, and then that's it. You know, you go from there. But, you know, if you don't, see a lot of sales in your business and you're wondering why a lot of people won't visit your website it's basically or it's probably because of the way it looks like you said you can always hire a digital marketer to work on your website i do digital marketing myself work on your website month to month updating it um creating ads for yourself so you basically don't have to do it when you're an entrepreneur you get overwhelmed with a lot of things and you cannot do everything at the end of the day you're gonna have to hire some people to do that type of stuff so that's not it's not a bad thing so if you do need help hire someone professionally if you don't know how to create a logo or if you need help creating it and also when you're creating a name you know there's a lot of names that sound similar and there's some that don't just think about you know your name could be anything it could be your own name for your business you know just be unique be different you know think outside the box it took me I don't know how long it 
it took me to come up with a, um, a name for my business. My business name is Top of the Top Events. Like I said before in my previous video, when you think top of the top, you think spectacular, you think over the top, you think best quality. So that's why I thought of my name. I just thought of that name. Um, no other businesses in my industry have that name. So I'm like, okay, this is what I'm gonna name it. So it's really what well, you want Things to. will get expensive when you have your website and you have your logo, you're gonna have to pay for this stuff monthly. So that's why it is good to keep your expenses low. So that way, when you get more clientele, when you get more customers, the more money they pay, the more, you know, the better your website's gonna get and the more, you know, you're gonna have to pay to keep up with that stuff. All right, my next step to you guys is getting your business registered. Wherever, whatever state you live in, you need to make sure that do, you, do the state requires a business license if you're running out of your home. Whatever the case may be, make sure you are registered if you wanna register as a sole proprietor like I did, where it's individual and um, your company and yourself is not separated yet. So it's not separated yet. Whether you are an LLC, that means that your business and yourself is separated legally. So if anything happens and someone tries to sue you, they cannot sue you, they can sue your business. It's a difference. If you're working with someone like a partnership, you're gonna have to um, you know, come up with those things when you're applying for stuff that you're two separate people. So at the end of the, end of the day, when you make some type of profit or something, it's going two different ways. It's not just going to one person. And you know, you start off by yourself as individual or whatever the case may be before you start hiring employees. But it's very important to make sure you get your business registered as an LLC. So at the end of the day, when you start registering for stuff and you start applying for PPP loans and everything like that, and also, if you want to register a car in your business name, you know, you can get that car because your business is considered an LLC. So when you purchase a car in your business name, you know, your business is purchasing it as an LLC and you're not purchasing it as yourself. Because so when you go to a bank, and I think uh, some people, that's how they have the whole G-Wagon thing. You see a lot of entrepreneurs with G-Wagons is because they, um, they bought their car in their business name, which is an the LLC. They didn't go up to their self and just buy it and you know start making payments out of their personal accounts you know you can't do that if you want to pay for a car in your business name you have to have it as an LLC and you have to make the payments out of your business account and that's the next step is getting your business account when you have a business or when you have a side hustle whatever the case may be and you start making some money you need to have two separate accounts you need to have your personal account where you pay your bills and you know you know family friends whatever the case may be and you have you need to have a separate account for your business that's all your payroll um you're paying your expenses out of there you know everything dealing with your business you can't have it in the same bank it's going to get confusing you're not doing your finances right and it's going to be all over the place a lot of entrepreneurs make that same mistake so when you first start off in your business make sure you get a different business bank account and i'm also going to list some ones below um for some business bank accounts like bank of america navy federal um there are some third party ones but make sure they are fdic approved and a lot of this stuff i'm telling you may be overwhelming overwhelming sorry but it is very important if you do not do any of these steps or you know have your business account you don't have a logo you know a lot of customers and clients you know they're not going to come to your business because it's unprofessional and it's all over the place and you don't have it set together so before you start reaching out to people and start you know promoting your business make sure you have everything in line and then once it's in line then you can start hustling and then you can start doing what you actually you know where where you want your business to go successfully. I'm not promising any business owners that your business is just gonna jump off the wall you're gonna start making 100 grand like I'm not promising anything I'm just letting you guys know what's the best things to do so you don't get sued so you can protect so you protect yourself and your business and so that you know nothing bad happens so you know you have everything set you have everything your agenda and that you don't make the same mistakes that most entrepreneurs make like I did another one of my steps is business credit a lot of businesses do not have business credit you guys are doing it backwards you need to have a business credit card and you can have more than one if you already have one um, when you apply for a business credit card you may get a higher limit than your personal because it is your business and some banks you know trust businesses and they want you guys to succeed whatever the case may be if your limit is seven thousand ten thousand you know twenty thousand whatever it you know whatever it is this is to help you you know pay off your expenses pay off your utilities um, for your business pay off supplies inventory this isn't just to, um, you know when they give you the business credit card you know it's not to just use willy-nilly just go shopping with it no it's not how it is 
you're supposed to build your business credit so that way you can get approved for much more things. and there's many business uh, credit cards available for you guys like american express you can do discover um a lot of them are really different especially depending on the interest so before you apply you want to make sure you read everything um the policies and everything so you don't get overwhelmed with a lot of things and if you do have a late payments you're not hit with fifty dollars here a hundred dollars there so yeah that's another tip my favorite one is the whole ppp loan thing you know this year a lot of people took advantage of that that didn't have businesses and it was just all over the place my advice to you is if you do have a business do not be afraid to apply for business grants and ppp loans they're out here for a reason they want to help you guys it won't be out here for long since covid happened this was just like you know a yearly you know conventional thing then they usually happen at the beginning of the year i don't know what's going to happen next year or the year after that if they're still going to have them like i said a lot of people took advantage of that and you know that put a lot of business owners in the hole uh don't be afraid to apply for them uh obviously you're a business owner so you're going to spend all your own money on your business which is a good thing but you know grants are to help you and to give you that boost so um, if you do fall off track you know that could help you in the long run there are a lot of business grants out there some of them are scams so you want to be very careful um, I said in my previous Instagram uh, video that Wompley is a good one I used Wompley last year for my business I applied um, I just filled out my information make sure you have your tax returns and your tax information also if you want to apply for PPP loans I apply for it and I got 1700 and the way to do it is you have to spend 6% on payroll expenses as in your Wi-Fi utilities you know um, what you buy with your money for your ads and paying for your inventory and everything like that and then the rest of the 40% you know goes the other way so you have to spend a certain limit amount um, to basically get it, you know, approved. If you don't, then, you know, a few months later, they're going to hit you and you're going to have to pay that stuff back. So thank you so much for watching my video. Hopefully this helped you guys a lot. If you are a beginner and you have no idea where to start, or hopefully this helped you and you're already an entrepreneur and um, you didn't know some things. So catch me on my next video and please subscribe, guys. Um, thank you.